Uh, so let's just take us through those numbers. I mean, I mentioned revenues up 23%. We're looking at pre-tax profits up around 53%. We're looking at a very strong period that was. So take us through some of the contributing factors to this double-digit performance. Hello, Eleni. Nice to be here. Um, well, what, has, what we've tried to do really is to do what normal businesses will normally do. First, we try to grow the top line of our business, and then also we try to reduce our costs. So um, you see that it's a combination of the two. We reduce costs by about 29% um, compared to the same quarter last year, uh, and then we grew our top lines by diversifying our um, income mix. Um, you will know that last year we were getting revenues really from one source. This year, by our efforts, we've tried to bring in revenues not just from our hospitality business, but from also from our um, investment trading activities. Okay, so let's just touch on the hospitality segment of your, uh, your company and I'm looking at the partnership that you've got with uh, the Hilton Hotel chain. We've seen very strong occupancy rates. I mean, at some point, very close to 100%. This must be very good for business. Uh, what kind of plans do you have to expand further? Uh, we know that you might be looking at developing new hotel chains uh, across the region. Yeah, what we're trying to do um, is to grow our hospitality business starting from Nigeria. Um, as you know, the Transcorp Hilton Abuja is Nigeria's premier hotel. It's a five-star hotel, sits around 70 rooms. Uh, it's probably the best hotel in Nigeria, which is why you see occupancy is always floating close to the 100% mark. Um, what we want to then do is to transport this across the nation in the first instance. We've identified about five key locations in Nigeria where we're going to uh, put up new hotels. Um, we have the Transcorp Hotel in Calabar, which is a Nigeria's tourist destination. So we're bringing our unique brand of hospitality to various state capitals in Nigeria in the coming two to three years. And that's just for our hospitality business. You know, we also have um, very strong plans for our other two kind of businesses, which is our agribusiness and our energy business. Okay, so a lot of positive prospects that you, you're painting out there. Um, and again, it just seems expansion, and obviously you're a conglomerate. And we know in the developed market, conglomerates haven't really been in fashion for you know, quite some time. You seem to be getting this very right. And some say that you don't really have a particular focus. And you mentioned the agricultural sector as an example. Are you always going to be this diversified? And do you think this puts you in a very strong position relative to other companies that just have very big focuses on core businesses? Eleni, you know, um, you, you don't have a conglomerate discount when conglomerates destroy value or you also have a conglomerate uh, premium. What we're trying to do is to ensure that uh, in each of the three sectors where we focus, which is energy, hospitality, and agribusiness, we bring value. And, and at the end of the day, what we're doing at the corporate center really is to uh, link up these three businesses in a synergistic manner such that you have a premium on what would have happened if these three businesses were run separately. So um, it's interesting, like you say, but we think we are do we do we do think we are getting it right. Um, how do we do this? We have a very strong corporate center, which is made up of you know experts and professionals in um, the key corporate center activities of um, resource management, of legal services, of finance management, um, and such. So. We try to reduce the total group costs by ensuring that the corporate center is very effective and harnesses all of the potentials of our three key businesses. Okay, so let's look at your, you, you were talking about agro-allied space and agro-processing, a juice concentrate agro-processing plant. This is quite an interesting space. Uh, take us through this investment and what kind of return on equity you're expecting down the line. What kind of growth potential lies ahead for this particular space? Um, what we did in Nigeria was to establish Nigeria's first juice concentrate plant in the Middle Belt. Nigeria, very interestingly, is one of the highest producers of citrus in the world. Um, and it's a shame for us to see that uh, before we started our investment, that there's no concentrate processing facility in Nigeria. So what we've done is to team up with the Benue State government who have built this plant, um, and we've leased this over the next 10 years, and we are beginning to process oranges and mangoes in the first instance. We expect that we should be able to extend this to other fruits that Nigeria is very proficient in in the next few months. Um, how have we done this? Well, it's very simple. The, num the numbers really make sense um, if you look at it. Over a million um, metric tons of citrus is produced in Benue State only. Um, and then there are quite a large number of other states across Nigeria who also have you know, very uh, strong production of citrus. So um, what we've tried to do is to start up small 
Our first plant is a 26,500 metric ton capacity plant. Already, um, we're producing round the clock with that one, and we're looking at plans for the a second plant, which we expect to come into production by next year, which will be about three times the size of this first one. Okay, this is a very fascinating. Are you looking at um, exports at some point, or are you just um, right now catering for the demand uh, within Nigeria? We're starting with uh, catering with Nigerian market only because, um, like I said, Nigeria imports 100% of its concentrates before now. Mm. And so we think that over the next three to five years, we should work with other like-minded uh, producers to ensure that we process all of the Nigerian needs. Um, in the second phase, which is you know, between the third and the fifth year, we think um, there's a large market also across West Africa. And we should be looking at that very, very quickly. Okay, let's take let's look at your um, the energy space as well. You've have uh, we've heard of a partnership with Symbion Energy. Uh, give us a breakdown of the partnership and the composition, the synergies that you're expecting there, and again, just looking at the investment prospects. Um, what we've done with Symbion, which is one of our partners, is really to come together to bid for one of the 16 energy asset power stations, and uh, that the country is. Um, about to sell off under a government uh, privatization program. Um, Nigeria has a huge energy requirement and right now the existing plants are producing you know, very little, um, about 3,000 me megawatts of energy. We think that we are, our consortium is well positioned to take over one of these assets and raise um, the output significantly. Um, without trying to be, without disclosing um, details, we think that we can very easily double the output of the plant that we're targeting to buy um, within the first two years of our acquisition. Yeah. Okay, uh, just I'd like to delve into your share price because, um, you know, investors that bought your stock around four years ago um, haven't really moved much. We've actually seen a downward spiral within the stock. But from what I'm hearing, you know, you're looking at double-digit growth. You're looking pretty strong on the investment platform as well. What is it going to take uh, to see more investor sentiment uh, towards your share price? Uh, we know that overall Nigerian markets have been coming under pressure. We have seen a bit of a recovery as well. Uh, there's news that you might be paying out a dividend at some point so just take us through that uh, that process and what kind of numbers you're expecting down the line Eleni, yeah, we're expecting double digit growth in our um, business um, but not just simply double digits we expect really to uh, move much faster than double into triple numbers um, our, our share price has gone up 25 percent last week and it's up about another eight percent this week already but we're not really excited about that because we know that the is a, is a marathon. Um, our shares closed today at 86 Cobo, which we think is you know direct reaction of uh, investors to our initial efforts to turn around this enterprise. Um, we think also that having gone seven years without paying dividends, uh, our first challenge really as a new management team would be to do that. And we've promised our investors uh, when we had our annual general meeting last two weeks that we intend and we must make it a priority that by the end of this financial year, we'll pay uh, the company's first dividend. We're working around the clock for that, and we are you know, very much encouraged by these first quarter results. We think if we maintain this trend, um, that will definitely be on course to pay the company's first dividend by end of this financial year. Thank you, sir, for joining us. It's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thanks so much for your time. Much appreciated. Uh, that was the Transcorp CEO, Obina Ufodo.